My name is Jack and I'm obsessed with all things fish. I'm trying to catch a hundred different species of fish from British waters as I fly, course and sea fish for whatever comes along. This week I'm doing something slightly different and covering the sturgeon found in the UK. However, our native sturgeon don't feed in rivers and the only sturgeon that get caught are the ornamental ones, which as we'll cover, are illegal to have in fishing lakes. So I didn't really want to encourage the spread of species that shouldn't be there. So instead, I'll be speaking to ornamental fish expert, Matt Faulkner, about UK sturgeon. Matt, how you doing? Very well, thank you. Where, where are we? Because people might be wondering what, uh, what we're in. So this is uh, what I call our fish house. So this is where we hold all the stock that uh, we've got on sale on the website. Uh, mainly ornamental stuff, but you know, a lot of the coarse fish species that go out to garden ponds, that kind of thing as well. Um, so, so yes, yeah, where, where we hold all the fish that we bring in from, from the site across there and from other suppliers. And you've obviously got what we're talking about today, which is sturgeon. Yes. So I guess what I'll, I'll ask first is, do, do they make good pets? If people were going to have sturgeon, would you recommend them as a pet? Might be a conflict of interest because well, you sell them. <laughs> Uh, they do come with a warning, we do, we do put it on the website. I think yep. the, the key thing with, with any sort of pet is, is do your research in advance. Yep. So uh, they are suitable for certain ponds. Um, they, they are quite an interesting uh, animal, I mean certainly prehistoric and they do have a really wide appeal. Uh, I think people need to certainly you know, do some soul searching as to whether they are the right pet for them. And we can guide them on that as well and there's certainly you know, loads of information out there. Um, just like any other animal, like a, a dog or, or, yeah, or a cat. Yeah, really. yeah. don't buy them. Um, but yeah, you need you need a large volume of water. That's that's the key thing. What uh, size kind of pond? I mean, I guess it varies on species, doesn't it? But if, if someone was thinking about getting a sturgeon, yep. what size kind of pond would you would you recommend? So there is a bit of a I would call it a myth, and I, I certainly say it's a myth. So you quite often see species labelled as dwarf sturgeon, which are generally sturlets. Okay. Uh, which, in the grand scheme of things, I guess is true because they are the smaller of the sturgeon species. But at my pond at home. I have a sturlet that is over four feet, right, that's and that's the one. dwarf one. <laughs> okay. So, you know, there's definitely some sales ploys out there um, that, that say, oh yeah, these are a small sturgeon. An absolute minimum, we'd probably recommend a, a, around 2,000 gallons, which is sort of eight to 9,000 litres. Okay. So, you know, to put that into to perspective, you know, you, you need a volume of water equivalent to about nine tonnes. Wow. Um, you know, and certainly the depth to make sure it's cool enough for them, being a, a, a sort of a cooler water species as well. So, yeah, pretty pretty specialised. It's a welfare thing as well. It's not yeah, there, absolutely. Like, it's, I guess it's a similar when people are buying like little terrapins and stuff. They buy them that big, and they're like, yeah. oh, isn't it sweet? Or they buy a sturgeon, yep. three or four inches. Oh, that would be fine in my koi pond. And then yeah. X amount of years exactly. later, it's you know you could put a saddle on the thing. Exactly, and then again, these are a long-lived species. You know, upwards of 50 years, some of them. Yeah. So, you, you know, they are a, they are a pet for life, and, and I think anybody that buys any any animal, years. yeah, yeah, wow. Uh, okay. Anybody that buys any sort of animal, you know, needs to be committing for the duration. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's one of my frustrations is that sometimes people go, well, I'll just buy it and grow it on and, and do X with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, it, I've made the joke before, but a fish is not just for Christmas, <laughs> it's for life. Yeah, no, they are. And we're both anglers, we've fished together yeah, loads yeah. of times, and we, we see it routinely when some anglers caught a sturgeon on the Trent or the Seven, and they're like, oh, isn't this brilliant? Yeah, so we've caught a back. sturgeon on the Trent when we, we, we both know they're not native sturgeon, like they're, um, they're generally one of the ornamental ones. So, what, what are the, the sturgeon species that are typically turning out? What are the ones that we're finding? So yeah, in terms of telling the species apart, uh, much easier as sort of adult fish. Um, the similar ones out of the sort of common species will be Siberian sterlet when they're small. Sterlets uh, in their normal colour have a white edge to their fins, they have a white sort of line uh, sort of along their lateral line, which they retain all the way through to adulthood. Siberians generally start off brown and go more of a grey colour as they get bigger. And, and the grey one, the grey Siberians are the ones that we tend to see caught in the rivers uh, and a lot of the lakes. Uh, albinos, pretty standard, they're bright yellow. Uh, there are leucistic variations which don't have the pink eyes, but for all intents and purposes, I'm not going to beat anybody up that says it's an albino and actually it's leucistic. Yeah, we are yeah, play, playing on a, such a, a minor term there. Uh, diamonds are pretty clear, uh, big snub nose, uh, quite large and quite sharp scoots when they get big, black and white. Uh, the only similar species that occasionally you find in the UK is Stellatus. 
uh, which are a lot, quite a long, thin sturgeon, uh, almost eel-like in the way they swim, particularly when juveniles, and they have a really long, sort of flat nose. Um, and um, obviously belugas, yeah, we talked about, but the belugas have a huge mouth. So they all have key characteristics. If somebody was to catch uh, an Atlantic or a, or a European in the UK, they are quite a distinct species, They're very, very heavily plated, more a sort of browny, sort of uh, grey colour. Um, but again, you know, looking at advice from the Canal and Rivers Trust on their website, any sturgeon caught, take loads of photographs. Uh, uh, and pop it back, you know, noting where it was caught. It's not worth the risk on the on the very slim chance of you catching a, a native one. I, I think the odds of winning the lottery uh, <laughs> would, would be greater than, than catching uh, a native sturgeon. I mean, I believe as well, from an angling point of view, uh, I think the native sturgeon don't actually feed once they sort of enter fresh water anyway. So it's either going to be foul hooks um, or turn up in, a, in an estuary sort of type yeah. net or something I know like that. Com commercial trawlers get the odd one. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's the only time we're seeing. I mean, one was caught earlier this year on a trawler. Yeah, yeah, so, I saw you know, that. They, they do turn up in the sea, yeah. but there's not been, I think the last confirmed Atlantic in a river was like the mid 90s. So not as long as you think. No. But yeah. yeah a long time ago. A long time ago. So if someone does catch a, a large sturgeon, what do you think they should do? Um, so ultimately, it should be returned to, to the water it, that, it, that it came from. I mean, obviously, if it's clearly a diamond or something like that, um, you know, the letter of the law is uh, they can be in lakes uh, up to a certain size and not used for recreational or commercial angling. It's basically got to be a purely ornamental lake. But things like it's got to be offline, it can't be in a flood zone, etc., etc. So they can be in ornamental lakes, but you shouldn't be catching them on rod and line. Um, so it's a difficult one there are fisheries out there that do it and do advertise it you know I'm, I'm not the, the fish police you know I'm not gonna gonna police that uh, but ultimately you know they do essentially come from ornamental garden ponds where they've outgrown and it goes back to my advice earlier is that you know if you're gonna get one of these things be sure you can can keep it throughout its, its, its life um, there are places that rehome them um, I have customers that have large ornamental lakes um, where we do some koi rescues or you know people moving the house or ponds broken you know they will they will take them uh, and we can relocate them there where they, they will generally just live out their lives as, as you know in essentially a, a, a large garden pond or a, a small lake you know yeah. half an acre or so um, but yeah the, for God's sake don't go chuck them in the local canal or the local river one you know it, it's been used to a, an ornamental life it's been fed you know decent food and all of a sudden you're kicking it out to fend for itself uh, and two obviously the, the impact on the on the local um, sort of wildlife and the indigenous fish population you know they do consume when they're big large amounts of food you know so they're gonna have an impact on you know potentially growth rates of the fish certainly when our own coarse fish and, and, and game fish are, are spawning you know they're gonna eat eggs and uh, you know, it just creates a whole load of problems um, so yeah, and potentially attracts attracts some wanted attention from from anglers. You know, um, dump them in a local park lake. You also can get people potentially poaching, and you've got other wildlife issues. So it, it's having that forethought. You know, wh where's this ultimately going to end up? Because yeah. you uh, you were saying as well that they're they're not that much of a challenge either, really. <laughs> so they're not the brightest fish. I think. My, my, my opinion of a sturgeon in its life is to eat as much food and get as big as I possibly can. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to give, to give names, but I have been witness to sturgeon captures where a lake is known to contain six sturgeon and in 24 hours there's been nine sturgeon caught. Yeah. And quite clearly one of them is the same fish, uh, multiple, multiple catches within an hour. So. You know, as a passionate angler, and I know yourself as well, Jack, you've got to beg the question, how easy do you want to make it? You know, why, why do you go fishing? And for me to see that fish repeatedly caught, there's a welfare issue. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not going to have recovered fully. You know, they're a high oxygen reliant fish anyway, so they don't do well in low oxygenated water. And constantly dragging that fish out, you know, and, and equally, you know, I, I, I will go and fish tough waters. You know, that, that to me is not a challenge. I just think 
there's there's something yeah. not quite right there. That's 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 not fishing for me. That's catching. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, there's yeah. a clear difference between the two. And I'm not going to go down the commercial cart waters route and all that. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, horses for courses. Not my thing. I know it happens. You yeah. know, let them get on with it. But you know, it's yeah. it's. Uh, they're not the brightest. They are definitely no, not the brightest. No, but they are. I mean, like, it's, it's interesting to hear your point on it. And they are fascinating fish. So yeah, absolutely. to hear a little bit more about them. Absolutely. Hopefully that's cleared up some things, as I see so much misinformation about sturgeon in UK waters. I'm not saying I wouldn't like to catch one, but I'm not sure how it would ever happen. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the vid, and I'll see you in the next one. I have a range of merch out, including fish posters, playing cards, and an ID book on British fish species, which you can get in the link in the description. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel, it only takes a couple of seconds, and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.